How's it going everybody? So in this video, we're going to be talking about my top tips for improving the quality, quantity, and regularity of sleep patterns. Okay. So, uh, I love talking about regulating sleep and improving sleep because I personally had insomnia for the majority of my life up until um, about maybe four or five years ago. Uh, well, actually more about six years ago was when I started to conquer my insomnia. When I was uh, younger, around the age of like nine years old, I was prescribed some pretty hardcore tranquilizing pharmaceutical drugs due to other reasons. But uh, basically it would turn me into a zombie for like 24 hours straight. I used to sleep through school. Um, it was pretty terrible at the time. Uh, and that actually made my insomnia even worse when I came off those pharmaceuticals. Um, and so, you know, from the time of like maybe 14 years old, uh, all the, well, more like 10 or 11 years old, all the way up until, um, I turned like 24 and I'm now 30. Um, so about six years ago. Uh, man, I had insomnia all throughout my teens. It was terrible. So I'm pretty confident in my suggestions on how to conquer sleep problems uh, with all of those things considered. These are also backed by the research. And if you look at anybody's experiences on how they conquered their sleep problems, you'll find uh, these are typically the most effective basic foundational solutions. Okay, So we're going to go over... Um, basic sleep hygiene, and then we're going to start to discuss uh, supplements and herbs and things that can really, really help improve your sleep, uh, even if you don't have sleep hygiene taken care of, okay? So sleep hygiene, extremely important, okay? There are a couple of very important foundational factors to drastically improve your sleep. Um, so the first one is waking up at the same time every day. Okay. Now this is a hard thing and this is why people who have sleep problems typically, you know, can't solve them is because they're just going to bed and waking up at random times inconsistently throughout the week, throughout the months. Okay. So You'll commonly hear people tell you to go to bed at the same time every night, okay? That is good, okay? Trying to go to bed at the same time every night is good. The problem is, number one, um, life happens. Life happens all the time. Not everybody's going to be able to make it to bed at the same time every night. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you have been having horrible sleep and weird sleep patterns for a long time, chances are you're just not going to be able to put yourself to sleep. Um, you know, you can't force yourself to sleep. Sleep is like love, okay? Um, you can't force it. You have to fall into it. You Just like falling in love, you've got to calm, you've got to fall asleep spontaneously. So, it's not something you can like forcefully induce, okay? So you can't force yourself to go to sleep at a certain time every night. However, this is this is how you conquer that. Wake up at the same time every morning, okay? So if you set your alarm to 8 a.m. every single morning, at first you're going to be tired because you're going to create a sleep debt, okay? a deficit of sleep. You're going to feel more tired and stuff for the first week or so because you're forcing yourself to wake up at 8 a.m. or whatever time it is you want to wake up every every morning. You're forcing yourself to wake up at 8 a.m. every morning. And at first, I mean, because you might still be going to bed at 4, 4 a.m. in the morning, right? You might be going to bed super late. And you only get four hours of sleep if you go to bed at 4 a.m. and then you wake up at 8 a.m. 
Uh, so you'll be deprived of sleep at first, but that's key because if you, if you wake up at 8 a.m. every morning and you don't get a lot of, you don't get enough sleep because of that and you're really tired because of it, well, guess what? You're more likely to fall asleep when you hit the pillow later on. So if you want to go to bed earlier, like 10 a.m. or sorry, 10 p.m., let's say. Say you want to go to bed at 10 p.m. every night. Uh, but you can't because you're not tired when you lay down. You don't get tired till 4 a.m. Well, if you force yourself to wake up every morning earlier at the same time at 8 a.m. every morning, and you build up that sleep debt, you're going to get tired and eventually you're going to be tired enough to be able to, to, to fall asleep at the same time every night. So... Forcing yourself to wake up at that early hour every day, no matter what, set your alarm clock. It will suck at first, but over time, this is what regulates sleep patterns, okay? Um, so melatonin. Everyone's heard of melatonin. So melatonin, so first of all, I don't like melatonin supplements for a number of reasons. Number one, um, most melatonin supplements are overdosed, okay? Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't even experience the benefits of melatonin because they take too much. Supplement companies typically only make melatonin supplements in doses of like one milligram or higher. For melatonin to be uh, high, the highest effectiveness, for it to be super effective, you need small doses. I'm talking like 0 0.25 milligrams, okay? So you can't really find that in stores. You'd have to buy it in a caplet form and break it off into quarter quarter ta uh, caplets in order to get the right amount. So it'd be effective if you take a tiny amount. Uh, and there are actually side effects like headaches and grogginess and like jet lag symptoms if you take too much, which most people do. But the other thing is melatonin will actually start to regulate um, once you get your sleep schedule on check. Also, there's a couple other things with sleep hygiene that we're going to talk about now that will also start to stimulate melatonin at the right times. Okay, So instead of taking a melatonin supplement, you want to make your sleep hygiene conducive to stimulating melatonin at the right times. So it comes out naturally instead of just taking a supplement because a supplement, it's like, it might be effective, probably be effective, but I guarantee you it's not going to be nearly as effective, especially long term, because I'm pretty sure those melatonin supplements, um, past a certain point, they you might build a tolerance. The other thing is melatonin supplements you don't want to take to induce sleep. Okay, so melatonin, what what you do, how you take melatonin supplements effectively? Again, I don't even recommend them, but if you are going to take them, it's for regulating sleep cycles. So, melatonin's not meant as a sedative supplement. It's not meant to induce sleep. It's not meant as a calming supplement or a tranquilizer. Melatonin's job is to solidify the time that you normally feel sleepy. So in order to take melatonin effectively, you need to take it at the same time every night, okay? Because its job is to regulate your sleep cycle. It's not to induce sleep. So if you're taking melatonin whenever you feel like you want to fall asleep, you're doing it wrong. So any kind of supplement you might be taking that includes melatonin in it, you need to only take it at the same time every night. Set a time and take it every night at the same time. This is why I generally don't recommend like, you know, um, like supplements that have a multitude of different sleep, you know, things in it. You want to take each supplement individually so you take the right dose at the right time in the right way. Uh, so anyway... Um, yeah, so regulate your sleep cycle by waking up at the same time every morning, uh, then trying to go to bed at the same time every night afterwards. Um, 
So check this out. So here is the next thing, okay? You want the temperature of your room to be 66 degrees, preferably, okay? This is um, the average temperature in the research that's shown to be effective at um, boosting your sleep quality. Got all my tonic herbs in this uh, coffee. Delicious. And we'll be talking about tonic herbs for sleep here in a bit. But, um, and I have had clients who had insomnia and panic attacks and stuff like that, or they'd wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks. And uh, the herbs that I'm going to recommend actually really help them to the point where they don't need, actually even need help anymore, which is great. All right. So, um, yeah. So, sleep temperature 66 degrees in your room. Okay. Um, now, I have done 68 degrees in my house and then just have a fan on me, okay? Fan, the, uh, like, a, like a room, a box fan or whatever, is also, it's not only beneficial for making the room temperature colder to help you sleep, because uh, temperature actually has more of a correlation with uh, falling asleep than sunlight, okay? A lot of people don't know that, even though sunlight's important too. Um... But a box fan also produces white noise. So white noise is also extremely beneficial for improving sleep quality because a lot of people are disturbed by random noises that might come up in the middle of sleeping in the background. So if you, if you wake up at 4 a.m. on a regular basis and you notice that that's a, a, a pattern for you, that could easily be caused by a garbage man outside or, you know someone uh, revving their car engine like an inconsiderate fool like in the middle of the night. That's happened to me before. Very, very annoying, but you, you know, you can't really control the outside world. So what you can do is you could do white noise, which is what I like to do because I'm like paranoid and I want to be able to hear if someone's like breaking into my house, which would never happen, I guess, but whatever, just in case, right? And if you're hypervigilant or paranoid like that, which I kind of am, uh, obviously that can make it hard to sleep. You know, for me, um, if some, whatever, if someone's snoring in the room or something, or if I hear a pin drop in the middle of my sleep, I'll wake up. It's a pretty bad killer instinct. But anyway, white noise can help with that. White noise can help cloud out the other noises that might happen and help you sleep. Uh, so a box fan is great for that, as well as making you colder, okay? So you do want the room cold, but then obviously you want to feel cozy under a blanket, okay? I know that sounds weird, but that's, trust me, it's amazing. Game changer. I find it very hard to sleep in like a hot room, okay? Um, backed by the research as well. So uh, one more thing, and this, this is key for melatonin production. Um, you want to s wear a sleep mask. So I don't do this um, anymore, but I used to, especially when I first started having like really bad, when I first started reversing my insomnia, it helped a lot actually. Putting a sleep mask over your, your eyes, okay? So generally speaking, um, research shows dark rooms and like pitch black, uh, you know, removing any kind of light stimulus to the eye um, seems to be a trigger for melatonin production along with cold temperatures in the room, okay? And I did find, so like every night at 11 p.m., okay, I would put a sleep mask over my, my eyes. And I noticed like at first, like sure it felt good, but it didn't really help me sleep. Kind of like melatonin supplements shouldn't, they, they don't, automatically help you sleep. But after about four days of using the, the sleep mask at the same time at 11 p.m. every night, I started to naturally start to feel sleepy around like 1030. Okay, about 30 minutes before I use a sleep mask. The reason and that the same thing happens with melatonin supplements, it's because whether you're using a sleep mask to induce melatonin stimulation, to stimulate melatonin, or taking a melatonin supplement, uh, when your body produces melatonin at a certain time every night, you start to feel sleepy 
a couple of minutes, like about an hour before that, before uh, the melatonin stimulation. Okay, so that's very, very key to understand. That's understanding how melatonin works is a game changer. So using a sleep mask to stimulate melatonin at that time every night. Okay, that's key. And so the basic foundational, the basic foundation of uh, sleep hygiene is the number one reason why most people have sleep problems. Uh, and I've, especially teenagers and children that are partying all night and they have inconsistent habits, like, and then they'll go to sleep at, you know, 6 a.m. every morning, you know. I, I've been there, done that, back when I was in death metal bands back in the day. Um, so, uh, let's see. So let's summarize. Uh, number one, wake up at the same time every morning. Okay. Number two, uh, get the, your room temperature colder, especially at the same time that you want to go to bed. Okay. About 66 to 68 degrees in, in the room. Uh, number three, wear, put a sleep mask on and get blackout blinds, blackout blinds. So curtains that just completely black out all the, the light in the environment. Okay. Uh, this alone is, is, the natural stimulus to put your body to sleep. Oh, and number four bonus tip, use a box fan or something for white noise in the background, especially if you have kids and, well, I guess you'd want to hear if they're crying or something, but you know. Um, white noise using a box fan. That will also help with the temperature, but just for the noise aspect, okay? You could also use earplugs, but I'm hypervigilant and paranoid at night and I don't want to block out my sense of hearing. But earplugs would probably be a good option as well, um, especially if you have like, you know, um, if you're a police officer, you do shift work or something like that. That's going to be essential during the daytime to sleep. Okay, so those are the foundations, okay? So now we'll talk about supplements. Now, again, get the foundation as best as you can first because that's going to make 80% of your results, right? All right, so uh, let's see. Um, what's next? So, yeah, so supplements. Um, there are a lot of herbs and supplements for insomnia and sleep issues and whatever, or to help you sleep. I have tried a whole bunch of them, okay? So I'm going to just start by saying what the most effective things that I found are. So, uh, reishi mushroom, okay, number one, okay. Now, uh, you have to get a high quality reishi, okay. Again, I am not sponsored or endorsed by or anything like that by any supplement companies at all. I personally have found uh, herbs that work for me or that work in general that are the best of the best. And I find the best companies that source them. When I recommend herbs, I recognize the fact that a lot of the supplements on the market suck. And I don't want people to get something, you know, like, like you try an herb for the first time and it doesn't work for you. And then you're just like, ah, oh, herbs suck. I'm just going to go with pharmaceutical drugs or whatever, right? I don't want that. You know, I want for people to feel the, the power of some of these herbs and supplements. But I've been experimenting with herbs and supplements since like 2012. So that's like ten, over 10 years now. I wasted thousands of dollars on faulty supplement brands. And I still experiment like that to this day. And I shouldn't really, but I do. So I don't want people to waste money on shit that doesn't work. Okay. So even if you have to pay extra money for a more expensive brand, it's important that you pay the money because you get what you pay for a lot of times. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you pay a shit ton of money for something that still doesn't work. So, so reishi, reishi is important. Uh, well, reishi is effective. Um, so there's a lot of brands of reishi. My favorite, my the brand that I recommend, especially for sleep problems, is Hyperion Herbs. Okay, um, but Terrasol Reishi. They have a four to one uh, 
uh, red reishi extract Terrasol. Um, you can find that on Amazon, um, and it's okay, but it, it doesn't work as consistently and as, as powerfully as Hyperion Herbs. So, you know, I'm not sponsored by Hyperion Herbs. So if you want to use Terrasol, go for it, but it's a four to one extract, and it's only a cold water extract. Hyperion Herbs is like a, a 10 to one uh, extract, and it's a dual extract. So that means it's both um, a, a water extracted as well as alcohol extracted. So there's more, there's more constituents, more active ingredients to it. And it's third party tested as well. So anyway, uh, Rishi. So how does Rishi work exactly? Okay. So Rishi has very powerful, um, muscle relaxing effects. Uh, it helps to improve respiration. So like your breathing, uh, it has a lot of profound immune boosting effects. So it helps to upregulate, uh, your body's endogenous antioxidants. So think, think about like uh, glutathione and superoxide dismutase. There's a lot of benefits on, um, on cancer, um, and apoptosis, like the killing of cancer cells while also boosting your own immune system. But the way that it works through sleep from what I've seen in the research is the endocannabinoid system. Okay. So, you know, like when people take CBD and stuff. So, uh, side note, uh, raw cocoa, raw cacao. So raw chocolate, if you get a high quality raw brand also actually, um, has precursors to endocannabinoids just so people know, and that can help you relax, but it's better to take that during the daytime. Anyway, Rishi helps to simulate, uh, the endocannabinoid system. It works on the endocannabinoid system. Um, and so I believe it provides uh, certain precursors to some of the endocannabinoids, but I think it also works on um, upregulating the sensitivity of your endocannabinoid receptors so that whatever natural endocannabinoids your body produces, you know, like CBD and stuff like that, um, they, you should feel more of an effect, okay? So for me personally, I've definitely felt this. I felt the calming, grounding, relaxing benefits of Rishi. And I've also, I seem to have seen a pretty, um, a decent boost in my power output and athletic performance, uh, when I would take Rishi before bed and then I take cordyceps in the morning. And typically these two herbs have been taken together for a long time, <clears throat> for centuries, but uh, there's also research on um, reishi mushroom and cordyceps taken together in elite level endurance athletes. You actually see an improved testosterone to cortisol ratio over time. I think it was a 16 week study and that's pretty profound in elite athletes. So that means it probably prevents overtraining and improves your recovery from exercise, which is important for athletes who have a really heavy training load. And this may also improve sleep because one of the first things that, that decreases when you have a higher cortisol to testosterone ratio and when you're training hard as an elite athlete, um, when you are approaching overtraining and that cortisol to testosterone ratio starts to get imbalanced, you start to see sleep decrease, like sleep, sleep uh, will significantly go down. So I think all of that's very important. So yeah, reishi mushroom... It's been used for thousands of years to kill anxiety, to calm down stress hormones, to relax you. Um, and you know, there's profound spiritual benefits, so to speak, if you believe in that type of thing, as in Rishi tends to guide you to your, towards your life purpose. But, uh, there's plenty of other information out there. I recommend Brandon Gilbert on YouTube, his channel. If you want to learn more about Rishi, he's the founder of Hyperion Herbs and that guy just for years was grinding out videos because he was passionate about, about it. All right. He doesn't really seem to care about selling his supplements, which is weird, but he seems to be doing just fine. So anyway, Rishi highly, highly recommend it. Okay. I might put links in the description. Um, if you want links, just like leave me a comment. Uh, I tend to forget about that, but I really shouldn't. Um, so next on the list, magnesium. Okay, so magnesium, 
The number one method of, of using magnesium, especially for sleep, is um, using Epsom salt baths, okay? So magnesium helps because it's a precursor to things like GABA, okay? And other neurotransmitters uh, required uh, for relaxing you or responsible for relaxing you, okay? Magnesium, everyone has heard the cliche, it's a cofactor involved in over 400 enzymes in the body, yada, yada. People think that like magnesium is deficient in the food supply, uh, I don't really know how accurate that is if you're eating enough uh, of the right foods, especially uh, meat, believe it or not, is a pretty significant source of magnesium, uh, especially lean meats if you eat the juices. Uh, let's see. Um, but magnesium baths, okay, Epsom salt baths. So Epsom salts are uh, magnesium carbonate, I believe. Or no, no, it's not. I forgot what compound, but, uh, yeah. So Epsom salt baths. Okay. Take Epsom salt baths. Now in order for Epsom salt baths to be effective, you, so you want to take a hot bath. You need probably like a whole pound of Epsom salts. Okay. If you really, really want the most profound effects from Epsom salt baths, you can't just do a cup. Okay. Try a whole bag. Okay. In fact, if you really want to fill it, try maybe three pounds, okay? Epsom salts, you find it for like a dollar a pound or something like that from your grocery store. Uh, generally, about a pound per bath is going to be amazing, okay? But if you have enough money and you just want to feel like the most amazing relaxation ever, try three or four pounds of Epsom salts in one bath. Holy crap, you will be... Like, you won't be able to fill your body. Like, I was... The first time I did this shit, I was freaking out. I was like, bro, I can't feel my body. What the fuck? Um, and to make it even more effective, uh, buy some chamomile flowers or even just chamomile tea. You find it for like a dollar from your grocery store. And put, a, you know, a couple bags of, of fucking chamomile tea in, in the bath or buy the whole uh, chamomile flowers, put them in the bathtub with Epsom salts. You will not be able to fill your body. Okay, because of the profound uh, muscle relaxing effects of the chamomile and the Epsom salts, and it will also uh, be absorbed in, in, through your skin directly in the bloodstream, kind of like a jab, you know. And uh, you will, um, it'll also be, uh, it'll relax your nervous system. You will feel just, like, I don't even know how to describe it. You won't, you'll just be like completely numb. You'll be like, fuck, like a sensory deprivation tank. But I would recommend having, you know, a significant other or a friend or someone there just in case you fall asleep in the bathtub because that shit is just like the most relaxing thing ever, okay? Especially if you're trying to like recover from hard training sessions. Uh, it's a huge pro tip, okay? But be careful. <laughs> it's a very powerful. Scared the shit out of me when I first did it. Um, so yeah, Epsom salt baths with chamomile flowers. You'll be sitting in a damn human-sized uh, cup of chamomile tea. Okay, <laughs> that and so chamomile is also a pretty good supplement to kind of like relax you before bed because it helps to stimulate GABA in the brain, uh, and I believe it might actually also um, work on endocannabinoid uh, receptors. But don't quote me on that one. So yeah, chamomile, chamomile bath, chamomile tea, drinking before bed, just very, very great, very key. So in general, those are some of the most powerful supplements and things you can do for sleep, but I have tried everything, so I'm going to kind of like talk about some of the other things I found to be effective. And again, Hyperion Herbs Rishi, highly recommend that one. All right, so what are some of the other things I found effective for sleep? So I've experimented with an herb called rhodiola. So there's two different forms of rhodiola. There's rhodiola rosea, and then there's rhodiola cantulata. They're two completely different strains of rhodiola. So rhodiola cantulata, a lot of people claimed would be stimulating, but for some reason, it had very profound sleep-inducing effects on me. So I had tried the bulk supplements brand uh, rhodiola cantulata, and I took like 
At first, I took one-fourth of a teaspoon, and it made me sleepy. Then I took a half a teaspoon. Then I took a whole teaspoon, okay? And the whole teaspoon, along with the reishi, was just amazing. So that is up in the air um, as something you can try after you've already tried the reishi and the chamomile baths with the Epsom salts. Um, I would not recommend trying this first because it's kind of an experiment that there's not a lot of people who tried it. Not even a lot of people sell this brand of rhodiola and there's not a lot of research on it. So, um, but it's something that I've tried recently that seems to be very effective. So another supplement I've tried that worked really well, but had side effects is ashwagandha. Obviously I have tons of it, like a dozen or more videos on, on ashwagandha. And I've been like really, really kind of back and forth with ashwagandha. Um, so ashwagandha has powerful effects on GABA. Um, and it also seems to uh, like upregulate the H1A serotonin receptor over time or something to that extent. Um, there's a variety of different forms of ashwagandha. Um, I think for sleep and to minimize side effects, you should probably look at the Himalaya brand ashwagandha extract. Um, like, yeah, and, I'm, and I'll just say this, Hyperion Herbs does have an ashwagandha tincture, but I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not going to, like, even talk about it. So just so you all know, I'm not, like, a shill for, like, Hyperion Herbs. Like, I only recommend things I've tried myself that actually work. Um, so... But uh, Himalaya brand, and I think they changed their their supplements recently, so I don't can't really say for sure. But I used to use that, and it worked really well. Um, but what I have wor- done, what I've used is the KSM sixty six ashwagandha, um, and I took like six hundred milligrams about six hours before sleeping, right. And you got to be careful because it has different effects for everybody, different forms of ashwagandha. But KSM 66, uh, I use the the Jaro, Jaro brand ashwagandha. Make sure that it's still KSM 66 because they change it every now and then. But um, I would recommend maybe looking into Nootropics Depot because they tend to have the best track record. But I haven't tried theirs some, uh, specifically. Also... Um, the Sensorol KSM six or the the Sensorol ashwagandha has the highest amount of withanolides and it tends to be the most relaxing sleep best for sleep. So Sensorol ashwagandha might be a good option. Uh, I've tried just the plain whole root powder. Um, I tried a teaspoon of whole root ashwagandha powder along with a teaspoon of um, Hyperion herbs reishi. And that knocked me out. That gave me the best sleep ever. The only problem is ashwagandha has a tendency to make people have an, uh, anhedonia, which is kind of like a lack of pleasure and a lack of feeling. Um, it tends to kind of like, seems to kind of like numb like what you would associate with dopamine. So it can make you, it can make you lose motivation and stuff like that over the long term. And it can make you feel more drowsy and and unmotivated and stuff. That is a tendency. However, if you really like want a powerful sleep inducing supplement, uh, combining whole root ashwagandha powder, one teaspoon with, with, uh, a teaspoon of the reishi, holy crap, that will make you sleep. It's just like, I don't know if I say the side effects are worth it. Um, but I think KSM 66 Ashwagandha, the Jaro brand, or um, finding a, another credible brand of KSM 66, like maybe the Nootropics Depot brand, and maybe Nutricos, but I, I'm not sure about them yet. Uh, probably a good option. Okay, so if you do try Ashwagandha, I recommend only trying Ashwagandha after you've already tried the Rishi. And if you still feel like you need some extra, the KSM 66 Ashwagandha is good. So there's actually a bit of, uh, of, of evidence, a bit of studies that suggest KSM 66 ashwagandha. It, it powerfully lowers cortisol. Okay. Um, seems to improve GABA 
upregulate GABA, which is your main neurotransmitter for relaxation. And it might actually improve testosterone levels. There's people that swear ashwagandha has improved testosterone. Okay. For me though, uh, like KSM 66 has been my best ashwagandha experiment. Um, it didn't seem to like, you know, make me super unmotivated like the other ones did, but after a while it kind of did. So you might want to taper off my one experiment with that one. Uh, it seemed to improve my strength. Like it seemed like within a couple days of taking KSM 66 ashwagandha, my strength just improved drastically. Like my maxes on squats and deadlifts and stuff improved almost immediately. So, and my reaction time seemed to improve, which was weird. So, uh, there's a lot of other supplements you can take. And as far as like endogenous, um, like oral, uh, magnesium, try magnesium, magnesium L3 and eight. That's magnesium L. T H R E O N A T E, something like that. Uh, that one I have not tried specifically, but a lot of people have used that with great uh, success. I like magnesium citrate. Some people get um, diarrhea from it. I don't. I've used it successfully. It's my favorite one, and I've had clients have, have as well. Other people have better effects with magnesium glycinate, okay, or glycinate. It's magnesium. G L Y C I N A T E. Um, there's other forms like magnesium ascorbate. Um, I think it might also be a form of vitamin C. Um, th I believe that's the form, or mas magnesium aspartate, okay, which I believe is a form that's also found in ZMA. You could just try taking ZMA too if you'd like. I've used that previously from Now Foods, the brand, and uh, I felt pretty badass uh, sleep quality and enhanced libido and motivation the next day. Um, magnesium along with B vitamin B6 and zinc, which is what's in ZMA. ZMA I find um, actually those are all precursors to dopamine production. So that might explain why it helps with sleep. Um, you know, so there's a lot of other things you can try. Um, I do have other suggestions and I, you probably find many videos of mine from years ago where I talk about supplements for sleep, but, uh, everything I mentioned in this video is like what I believe is the best, best options now. And I use that myself. Like when I'm in the middle of a really hard training cycle and I know I've been overdoing it, my sleep might start to start to deteriorate because of the amount of physical like hormonal stress from my training load, I'll start to use re, uh, reishi mushroom and some of these other things and immediately my sleep problems go away. Uh, other things you can try L-theanine. Okay. That's a precursor to GABA L-theanine. Um, I recommend the sun theanine brand of L-theanine, particularly I believe uh Jaro formula or doctor's best are good brands. Um, what else? Um, let's see. I'm trying to think, uh, I'm trying to, it's trying to come to me. All right. Well, those are the, those are pretty much like, oh yeah, kava, kava root tends to be good, but you know, there's a warning that kava might, um, you know, induce liver damage. I, I don't, I think that was a tainted supplement, but kava tends to be pretty good. Um, I've used it. It worked really well. You know, people like to use CBD. I've used it and I think it helped me, but I think in order to use CBD effectively, you need such a high dose. You'll be spending easily like a hundred dollars or more, like every couple days on CBD oil. So, you know, that's why I don't really talk about that as much also because of other things like the legality and YouTube, just like censoring or deleting people's channels for mentioning it. But yeah, so one more thing I'll mention is you you need to have the right mindset. Reading a book before bed and just not get, like like don't be attached to falling asleep, okay? You need to do something that kind of like makes you feel good. Like I sometimes will play a video game on my cell phone, but I'll keep the blue light filter on and um and my brightness super low. I might play a game. I might read a Kindle book or something on my on my phone until I fall asleep. 
Uh, what I really think works amazingly for for falling asleep, again, because you need to detach yourself from the attachment of falling asleep. One of the main reasons why people have trouble falling asleep is because they're so attached to falling asleep. They're like, ah, if I don't fucking fall asleep, then, you know, I'm going to be so tired at work tomorrow or like, you know, I'm, I'm going to like not be able to make it to work. I, you know, whatever. Uh, and they're like pissed off. Like I can't fucking sleep. Fuck. And it's like, well, how the fuck do you, you can't fall in love with someone or get someone to fall in love with you by, you know, having that attitude. The same thing applies to falling asleep. Okay. You can't be like, oh, like I need to, you know, I can't, I need to, I need to sleep for real. Like that's the exact opposite of the feeling state of falling asleep. So you need to be in the right asleep. Um, you need to be in a, a state of mind, a mindset that is conducive to sleep. So if you're like so attached to it, like, that's simply the wrong mindset and it's not going to help. Um, it's going to keep you from falling asleep. So detach yourself from the outcome of sleep. Just be okay with not sleeping. Uh, and realize also feeling like you're going to fall asleep doesn't mean you have to feel like you're going to be knocked out, right? Like you've taken some crazy drug. You just need to feel relaxed enough and then close your eyes, right? And I like visualizing, okay? This I f is amazing, Start to visualize, you know, for me, I visualize myself dodging punches and uh, basically sparring, like, you know, like striking. And uh, this actually is amazing. And it actually helps me sleep because you're kind of putting yourself in a dream state already. And if you're visualizing properly, you know, and you feel relaxed and everything else, especially you take all these supplements and do all the other stuff I talked about, you're in the right mind state and you're visualizing whatever it is. Maybe you're visualizing, I don't know, like jumping through a forest, like skipping lolly pop, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but you're visualizing something that's, that feels good to you, that you enjoy, that you're passionate about, whatever, that makes you feel good. Maybe visualizing your goals, visualizing yourself achieving your goals. Obviously, this is great just um, if you believe in like the law of attraction and stuff like that. Um, you know, like believing that you create your reality with your mind. This is good for that. This is good for motivating you. This is good for setting the next day up for success. But I find this is amazing for actually just putting you in a dreamlike state that makes you fall asleep. And this always works, right? Because a lot of people, they're thinking about the day and thinking about all the stresses they have, worrying, whatever. Or thinking about how they can't sleep. It's like, well, duh, no, you're, you can't sleep if that's what you're thinking about, right? And I am a very mental person, clearly. Like, I have, am constantly trying to figure out life. Like, what's the, the truth about heart disease? And, the, and how do I best stimulate strength gains in this client I have or whatever? I'm always trying to figure shit out. So I have to turn my, my, my cognitive brain, I have to turn my intellectual brain off. And turn on my dreamlike uh, brain. And I do that through visualization. So these days I visualize grappling. I visualize countering moves and stuff like that. Or if I learn something in class the, that day, I start to try to practice that in my brain. Um, or usually I like to practice like just sparring with people and like grappling with people and whatever. Sometimes I'll visualize myself winning a gold medal. Um, whatever. You know, and I've, you know, like visualizing myself lifting weights, whatever. So that I think is key. You need to detach yourself from the outcome of falling asleep, literally fall into a state of, of it. Everything's okay. Fall into a state of relief, of relaxation. Maybe feel like you're refreshed already from a good night's sleep. Work your way into that feeling state. Use visualization. Train your mind to be in a dreamlike state before you fall asleep. And with everything else considered, you're good to go. But all of these things combined are key. You can't just neglect one, okay? So uh, if you have any questions, post them down below. Oh, and another thing, there's a lot of medications people take. There are certain health problems like even blood sugar issues and stuff that can play a role in all of this. I found a ketogenic diet actually helps me sleep at night. And if I eat too much carbs, especially like 
white rice and stuff like that, um, I have, I, it, it's hard for me to sleep. So I like low carb that also ketogenic diets and low carb diets and the research have been shown to help stimulate GABA, which is your relaxation neurotransmitter. And that's one of the main reasons why, you know, scientists believe it, uh, ketogenic diets are a great therapy for epilepsy and tend to put epilepsy into remission. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for now. If you need any more suggestions or have any questions, post them in the comments uh, or DM me on Instagram at Coach Wolfgang VL. And uh, I'll talk to you all next time.